Welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial, we're gonna build uh, weapons such as this one, and we're gonna place them inside our video game. Now, in between the episodes, I may have lost the game file. There's just a game object with no folders inside. That's not that's not a problem. Anyway, this is our first camera, first person camera controller that has the axis, which is just a empty game object, and that holds in the camera. So this is basically everything we have. The very first thing we want is to define another game object in here, empty game object. And then we're going to call it weapons holder, which is going to hold our uh, weapon. Next, inside it, we're just going to drag and drop our favorite uh, weapon. In this case, I am going to use a M14 and a M4. We're just going to drop it in and I'm going to scale this to 100 to make it a uh, real life size. And then I'm just going to rotate the weapons holder to 90 degrees. Now it's uh, facing the right way. So remember the position of the actual uh, weapon has to be at zero and the rotation has to be at zero. It's just the weapons holder has to be placed in a specific uh, position. So we're just going to lower it a little bit down and we're going to put it to the side. Okay, here is our uh, weapon. And now what we can do is maybe delete this uh, prefab and drag and drop in our own prefab with uh, textures in it. So this is obviously a M4 with, with a uh, suppressor in it. Okay, so now once you have your weapon placed in your game, the, very, the, the next thing you want to do is make behaviors for that uh, weapon. To do that, obviously, we're going to create a new script and I'm just going to call it weapon. Okay. Now that we're inside the script, we're going to declare a float variable. So we're going to say public float and we're going to name it fire rate. Now we're not going to use this fire rate just now, but we're going to uh, default this to 15 or let's say 20. What I'm going to do is delete these two start and update methods and I'm just going to create a fixed inside the fixed update. I'm going to check continuously if I'm pressing the fire button. So to check the fire button is obviously checking for input. So input dot get button down. Actually, we're going to check for the button, not the button down since we're doing the fire rate. So we want to fire continuously and inside we want to check for a string called fire one. If we do that, we're just going to fire. Now, instead of adding lines in here, we're going to keep it a little bit more organized and we're just going to create a new block of code, a new block of, a new block of code. I'm going to name it fire and I'm going to create fire right here. It's obviously a private void method. And now inside the fire, we want to draw a raycast. So drawing a raycast, first of all, understanding raycast is maybe a little bit difficult if you just started. So for now, we're just going to write down the code. So raycast hit, and we're going to name it hit. And then we want to check if we hit something with that raycast. So we're going to ask if physics dot raycast. And now inside these uh, brackets, inside these brackets, 
we can see that it first needs a origin or the place where you want to start the ray and then we want a direction and these other uh, variables are optionals so for the start So for the start of the recast, we're going to need a new public origin. For that, I'm going to use the camera object. So I'm going to say game object camera. So back into the recast, what we're going to do is say camera game object dot transform dot position. This is the origin. And now we want the direction. Direction is the forward direction of the camera game object. So we're going to say camera game object dot transform dot forward. And then obviously we want to use the out. And now if we're inside this if statement, that means this raycast has hit a collider object. What we want to do is first display the name of that hit uh, game object. But even before that, what I want to do is just display a ray casting uh, from our weapon to the hit object. So what I'm going to do, and this is basically, uh, this is obviously uh, optional. So what I'm going to do is gizmos dot draw line this draw line takes a vector to start from and then the direction so what i'm gonna do is camera game object dot transform dot position and then So to draw a line, what I'm going to do is say debug dot draw line. We can do the draw rate, but for now we're going to just use this uh, draw line. This takes in uh, two parameters, but these two other ones are uh, optional. So the first, for the first parameter, we're going to say transform dot position. And then for the second parameter, we're going to say hit dot point. And now if we drag and drop our weapons controller, and then drag and drop our vertical axis, or it could be the main camera, it doesn't matter. Then we hit play. Now the the debug the debug shoots a ray from the weapon's start position. Next thing is uh, to create a particle system to simulate the muscle uh, flash. In this case, the suppressor flash. So what we're going to do is create a particle system. And now we're going to modify this particle system. What we're going to do is first come into the shape. We're going to do the cone. And now I'm going to make this cone much, much smaller. Okay, once you've got your shape the way you want it, next thing we're going to untick the looping. We're going to do the, the duration at 0.2. We're going to do the speed to vary from uh, between two different constants. We're going to vary it from 5 to 
8. Lifetime is going to be random between 0.2 to 0.4. And now this is what we got. Nothing very interesting. What we're going to do is go to emission and now we're going to do a kind of a burst. So by default we have a count of 30 which I'm going to decrease to 20 and now if I hit play it's going to do a burst which is kind of what we want. We're going to decrease the size from point 0.1 to point zero 0.05 and now we have little particles okay this is our muzzle flash now maybe we can make it a little bit less spread-ish by decreasing the speed to say 3 to 6 And that is it. Make sure to untick the looping and the play on awake. And inside the weapons controller, declare a new public particle system. And I'm just going to call it flash. So now every time we hit the fire button, we're going to do flash dot play. Of course, don't forget to drag and drop your particle system. Okay, now we have a firing muzzle. Now the next thing and the last thing for this tutorial, I'm going to use a ready-made particle system that is nothing but a uh, sparks. I'm going to delete that and inside your controller declare another particle system, but this time declare it as a game object. I'm going to name it bullet effect. And then inside the if statement, where we check if we hit anything, we're going to instantiate that bullet effect. So instantiate the bullet effect for the for the position. We're going to pass in again the hit dot point, and then for the rotation, we're going to pass in quaternion dot look rotation and then inside the brackets we're gonna say hit dot norm I'm gonna drag and drop this effects into the bullet effect and then inside the particle system don't forget to destroy the particle system after being used so back inside our uh, game now we have particle system being played. Next thing, we want to add in a crosshair. So that's pretty simple. Just go to the UI and do an image. The image by default is placed in dead center. So you don't have to worry about that. You just have to scale it a little bit. And I'm going to use this. I'm going to use this uh, kind of re rectangle as my crosshair. And then I'm going to remove this draw line. Okay, so this is what we got so far. Now the next thing we want to do is maybe add in uh, these kind of pushable props in the video game. So all a prop has to have is a rigid body with a set mass. I'm just going to default it to one 
and then a some kind of collider. I'm just using box collider since it's very light to use. So once you've done that, go back to the controller and what we're going to do is apply force to the object that this uh, hit recast is currently hitting. So before adding the force, we want to check if the hit object has a rigid body attached to it. So hit dot rigid body is not equal to null. So if it's not, that means it's a got a rigid body attached to it. So what we can say is hit dot rigid body dot add force to a given direction. So this again takes in a vector three parameter. So for the vector where I'm going to pass in minus hit dot normal and the amount of force which I'm not going to hard code. Instead, I'm going to make it a changeable float. So I'm going to add force. I'm going to declare a force default value of 80. I'm going to hit save and I'm going to hit play. Okay. Now, if I hit this bin, it's going to try to rotate. Okay, now let's uh, use this fire rate variable that we declared earlier. So to use that, I'm going to need a private variable of type float. I'm going to call it ready to fire. And now where we ask for the button, we're going to add in another argument that says if time dot time is bigger than or equal to ready to fire we're gonna actually fire but before we fire we want to increment this ready to fire to a specific uh, value that value is going to be time dot time one slash one f slash the fire rate so all this is doing is adding some time then multiplying it with the system time so it just doesn't just add in infinite time to it and then it's adding that to this uh, float variable so once that is ready we can go ahead and fire so if we save this and hit play now we're, we're still firing basically the, the same fire rate. But if we now decrease this to 10, we can fire a little bit slower. Now if we decrease it to 2, we can fire much, much slower. So say you have a shotgun in your video game you can make it shoot less. You can make it shoot at a lower uh, fire rate. Now, if, say, you have a machine gun, you want it to shoot a, a higher fire rate. Okay, so this is the tutorial for this uh, episode the next episode we're gonna add in ammo and re reloading the weapon so see you next time